So today what we're doing in the shop is we're going to be re-gluing some mid-century modern Danish teak chairs. And they're loose, so what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to knock them apart and re-glue them. Let me show you sort of what we're dealing with here. See that play right there? Okay, we have to get rid of that. These chairs are a little bit loose, so we're going to knock them apart. We're going to re-glue them. I'm going to show you how to do it. I hope you enjoy the video. So we've had a couple requests lately to knock some chairs apart and to re-glue them and to show the process. And I'll try and do that a few times um, because there's different chairs, different styles, and they're different as far as how they uh, deconstruct and then reconstruct. So these are the only chairs I have here right now that need to be done. So these are the first ones that we're going to show you. Um, so the process is similar, but it's not the same with all the chairs. And the reason, one of the reasons is, you can see in this chair from this angle right here, well, these are Danish modern chairs, so they're built a little bit differently. And you see there's no glue blocks here. There's no corner blocks, okay? That's one of the big differences with this chair. This chair has no corner blocks. A lot of the chairs that you're going to come across are going to have a four corner blocks right here. So your technique to knock them apart is a little bit different than this one. So, but on this chair, we're going to show you how we knock these apart. Now, when you're taking chairs apart and re-gluing them, I have sort of a uh, sort of a standard approach to that. And that'll be the same on all chairs that I re-glue. And that is that I, I only take apart the loose joints. So on this chair, what we have is we have play this way, okay? F side to side like this, we have, we have some play. However, front to back, they're structurally pretty sound. The, I, I really don't have any play this way. And flip it over this way, I have no play this way either. So they're really tight on these two joints. They're real tight. On these two joints, they're real loose. Now, I, I'm, so what I'm going to do is I'm only going to take these joints apart, these, these two here, and the two in the back, because they are the ones that are loose. Let me tell you why I do that. If you try and take a chair apart that doesn't want to come apart, you'll get it apart, but typically it'll be in pieces. So a lot of times what you're going to have to do is then you have a lot of repairs on your hands because you're taking a glue joint apart that, that just doesn't want to come apart and that's not ready. So when I do that, I end up breaking stuff. I end up making way more work for myself and I'm taking apart something that's tight just to try and make it tight again. So, you know, the old, the old saying, if it's not broke, don't fix it. If it's not loose, I'm not taking it apart and I'm not going to re-glue it because I've learned through the years, all it does is cause me grief sorrow, pain, and misery. So there will be no misery today, I hope. But sometimes, even when you take apart a joint that seems to be loose, you break something anyway. And that's sort of the pro part of the problem with when you do re-glue chairs. Sometimes you break something and, and you cause a little bit of extra work for yourself when you go to re-glue it. There's just no way around that other than we try and be really careful. We try not to do that, but sometimes it, it just happens and it might happen on this chair. So. Uh, you know, we'll have no idea, but if it does, you know, we'll, we'll have to fix it together. My only tool typically that I'm going to use when I knock it apart is a rubber mallet. Okay. I just use a plain old rubber mallet. So we take a rubber mallet and what I'm going to do, you want to, you know, you want a nice solid work surface and this chair is going to be refinished. So I'm not um, overly concerned if I get a scratch or something. If this chair wasn't being refinished, I'd have a blanket on my work surface. So protect the chair, because I'm gonna assume that you're not gonna refinish them. Protect the chair so that when you're moving it around, you don't scratch it. And what you wanna do is, if there are glue blocks here, which there are not on this chair, but if there are glue blocks here, you wanna take the screws out of the glue box. Typically there's four screws um, on each one. So you wanna remove those. But on this chair, uh, there are none. So what we're gonna do is, again, we're gonna, we're gonna figure out which joints are loose, which ones we wanna take apart. Again, it's these two joints and these two joints. So I want to flip the chair this way. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're just going to use the rubber mallet. So again, I have no, um, I have no screws here to take out. These are just dowels and glue holding this chair together. So I do have, let me show you something though. I do have two, some kind of nails here. 
and I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if I can show them to you here, but if you can see, somebody put a nail here and a nail here, and I just don't really know what that's what's what that's going to do when I go to knock them apart. I guess we're going to find out. Okay, so usually what I'll do is I pick the chair up off of the surface. I pick the chair up and I and I I tap it above on the above the joint and then below. Okay, nothing real hard, just Okay, and now you see it's starting to come apart on us. All right, and we just keep tapping it a little a little on top, a little on the bottom. A little on top, a little on the bottom. Top until it comes apart. And right there are our nails, see? So they do not belong there. No nails on these chairs. They don't belong there. Somebody put them there. They shouldn't have. And that is the worst way to fix a chair ever. Drive nails in there. Oh, we've got more on this side. I see them now. They're actually here. Um, can you see those? Nails right here. Okay, so there's nails here and then there's nails here. What happens when people put nails in? It never tightens the chair. A nail doesn't tighten the chair. A screw will tighten the chair and you can use screws I'm not going to show you how but you can use screws you have to pre-drill a hole though otherwise you cause a whole lot of damage on the chair if you don't pre-drill a hole with a screw you technically can use screws a screw will hold it together because of the threads a nail won't because it's just a rot so a nail is not going to hold a chair together whatsoever so here's the tool I tend to use uh, more times than not if I got to pull a nail out like this I just use a vice grip and I just grab the nail with the vice grip lock the vice grip on and then I just try and twist it out sometimes I have to use leverage I would try not to but you know sometimes I just break them so there's your nail okay so now we're gonna do this joint right here and then this arm this side of the chair will be apart so same process okay it's just going to tap it here there you go no nails in that part so there's four of these chairs i've done three of them this is the first one that's had any nails in it and do the other one this one's already been re-glued there's like a little bit of glue you can see squeezing out of the bottom there right, right there now what uh, a lot of people do and what never works again besides nails is opening up a joint I, and i think that this is probably the standard way of fixing a chair from what i can see from what comes to the shop they'll open the joint up a little bit just kind of sort of like you know bend it open a little bit and then just try and push some glue in there and then push it back together and then think that that's going to hold the chair and i wish it did you know life would be a lot easier if it did but it, it doesn't work it doesn't hold the chair together you don't get enough glue in there you never do so all right we've got nails in here i'm kind of scared to do this i'm scared to do this the problem is we've got nails coming from two different directions here It's budging, but not much. So, I'm just trying to do without breaking it. We're slowly getting it, but there's like quite a few nails in here. Another thing you want to try not to do, and it's it's hard because it seems natural to do this normally and i won't say always because sometimes it does work sometimes it is necessary um but you i i try not to take a chisel or anything and put it in here and pry it up because usually all i do is cause damage to the wood when i do that i try not to do that that's usually like a last resort if i can't get it apart and it's like just a little part and i need to like kind of finish it off sometimes i'll grab it but a chisel and and pop a chisel in there and twist it but i try not to do it Ooh. 
Okay, so we got it apart and did no damage, fortunately. All right, and there's our, there's our home fix right there. All right, one more joint to go. Okay, so there you go. So the chair is apart. And like I said, we're not going to take these joints apart because these joints are solid. Okay, no point in taking, trying to take something apart that's solid because all we're going to do is cause damage and break it. So once we've taken the chair apart, the next thing that we want to do on this chair is we want to scrape off any glue residue that's um, on. So we, what we want to do is we want to scrape off any glue residue that is on the dowels and on the surface of the chair here so on this surface and on the dowels and it will vary from chair to chair as to how much glue and 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 junk that you have on there some chairs are just loaded especially like if they're chairs that people have re-glued and re-glued they've used epoxies and glues and all kinds of crap and shoved stuff in there and you end up scraping for 10 minutes 15 minutes trying to get it all off i use a little scraper um I have a little flat square one around here that I usually use, but I can't find it. I just used it yesterday and I set it somewhere and I don't feel like really looking for it because this is a brand new one. It's just round, but I just grabbed this one. Um, it's just a small, a, a small scraper. Again, I'll put a link below to little scrapers that you can use for this. Um, but little sc small scrapers really work nice. And I just take a scraper and I just try and scrape off and you literally can see right here. I don't know if you can see me scraping that wood off, but but I'm actually getting little chunks of but I'm getting little chunks of wood and and glue, and I'm just scraping off the surface. And so I what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over all this and scrape this. Okay, and I'll scrape this surface, I'll scrape that surface so we're basically clean of any old glue residue so that we have a pretty good wood to wood contact and that way our wood glue can really do what it's going to and that way our wood glue can do what it's intended to do. If we don't clean these surfaces really well and we just stick glue back on here and shovel them back together, the glue doesn't really hold because the glue can't penetrate into the wood and really hold on to the wood so it's just trying to hold on to that glue surface and what will happen is you'll glue it together and it'll seem like it's tight and it'll be good but it just won't last because you know we didn't clean it out properly um so on on the holes here what we'll do is just take a drill bit if you have a drill bit the size of the hole just take a drill bit and just clean the hole out just clean the hole out with a drill bit um, and then scrape the surfaces okay clean as clean as you can get them you know um just scrape a lot of the old glue residue off and then you're ready to re-glue and reassemble the chair so what we're going to use is we're going to use um tight bond premium wood glue i'm going to use that and i'll put a link down below in the uh description and i'll do that so that you can find these products so that it helps you a little bit if you want to use the same products that we use in the video if you want to use your own products you know by all means you know go ahead so but you know this way if you want to use these products i can show you where to get them and you know we'll just put amazon links down hopefully you can get the best price that way on them and it's the stuff that we use um so we're going to go ahead and we're going to put glue into our hole our dowel hole here so we're going to put glue in and we're going to use a little bit a little brush and just uh sort of i'm going to put it in the hole and just Make sure that I spin it around in a circle and get all the wood surface covered with some glue. And then I've got to figure out which one goes where. I've got one that's longer. The longer one goes in the front. It's a really good idea, actually. Since this is my fourth chair, um, I got a little cocky here because I know how to put them together, but I'm still going to have to think and look at the other one. But um, it's a good, if you, the more parts that you have, you should label them. So label the parts as you take them apart. Label them however you need to label them so that you know where, how they go back together again. Because you don't want to swap things around and switch things around. So if you label everything, it's going to make your job a little bit easier. I'm telling you to do something I didn't do myself, so that makes me a pretty bad teacher. But, um, you know, I didn't need to, so I didn't. Shorter one goes in the back. 
So I'm going to put a little glue on here as well. And again, we're going to just make sure that all of the surfaces are coated. So I'll use my brush. I don't go crazy like uh, put a ton of glue here because usually, you know, a, a ridiculous amount isn't isn't necessary. But make sure everything is covered well. You actually want a little bit to squeeze out, uh, preferably when you uh, clamp the chair together. Okay, so then this goes together like such. And I roll it around. And do this one. And same process in the front here. And we're just spreading the glue around with this brush. Same thing on here, and I just push, put this in, spin it around the circle, and that kind of takes my glue inside and really moves it uh, around and makes sure that all my surfaces are covered. Then we put this together this way. And then I'm just gonna kind of squeeze it together to start with. So that's half. All right, so then we take the second half of the chair, same thing, put a lot of glue in the dowel holes, take our brush and squeeze all the glue in a circle. Okay, so then we're going to just assemble this by putting the dowels in those holes. Then we want to our, then we go back to our mallet, tap them in. Okay, now our chair is back together. So we make sure it's nice and level. And now what we're gonna do is grab two clamps to clamp this together. So you can use different types of clamps. Um, I'm gonna use bar clamps here. And what we're gonna do is just squeeze this one together. And then we're going to put a second clamp in the back here. And we'll squeeze this together and tighten the clamps up. Okay, so I went around and cleaned up all the glue. All I did was use a you know, water, little spray bottle with water and a dry rag and just cleaned up all the glue and all the glue residue off of all the joints. And this chair is all glued up now, so I'm just going to, you know, let it sit and dry overnight and give it a, you know, it, it, a lot of times it doesn't take that long, but it's always best to give it, give it a little bit of extra time, give it overnight to dry so that way it's, you know, we know it's good and solid. So, and I also have it on a flat surface here when I glue it up so I know that it won't rock or um, wobble. So it's all clamped up, it's all done, and that's pretty much does it for this particular chair and this particular tutorial. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, refinish this chair. So one, just one last thing for me to point out um, on this one is when, if, if you're not refinishing the chair, and I'm going to assume that most times you won't, when you use clamps, you can use a lot of different types of clamps, okay? But what you should use is uh, some type of wood block, uh, some type of block 
inside the clamp here um, so that when the clamp surface goes up against the wood, you know, it doesn't do any damage. I'm sanding and refinishing this chair, so it wasn't something that I concerned myself with. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up for this tutorial. Um, I hope you found it helpful. Um, you know, like always, you know, subscribe to our channel and give us a like. Check us out on the web at werefinish.net. And I hope you found this video useful. We'll see you on the next one.